Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quantize MIDI in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here that already has a pad part with chords recorded. And it sounds like this. So I want to record a melody on top of it. So I'm going to create a new track right here, name it Melody, set the input to my USB MIDI keyboard, turn on input monitoring, and put it into record. Then I'm going to put a preset, which I saved as an effects chain called Plucked Wood. And it sounds like this. Let's also give this track a color. Now, when I record MIDI in a small section like this, I like to first create a MIDI item. Hold down Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and just draw one from beginning to end. Then I'll change the record mode right over here to record MIDI overdub. That's going to record the MIDI right into this item. So I'll turn on the metronome. And let's record my MIDI part. So as you can tell, that's pretty sloppy, because I'm not a great keyboard player. But luckily, we can quantize the performance and make it perfect, which involves putting each note right in the grid. So the way to do this is double click the MIDI item, which opens up a MIDI editor. And here's all the notes I just played. But if we change our grid to 16th notes, we can see how sloppy they are. They're not perfectly on the grid. This one's late, this one's early, and so on. So let's quantize them to make them perfect. We'll go up here to our toolbar and hit this button labeled Q for quantize. Or we can just hit the Q key on our keyboard. And that opens up this dialog. Now by default, it'll look like this, with the settings based on our grid. So it's going to quantize right now based on 16th notes, 32nd notes, or quarter notes, whatever our grid is set to. But we don't have to use the grid. Instead, we could switch it here to manual, which gives us a lot more options. So let's go through them. The first option decides what we quantize. All notes, just the selected notes, all events, or just selected events. I'm going to choose all notes because I want to quantize all the notes. Then we can decide what we're quantizing. Just the position, which is going to quantize the attack of my note. So if I zoom in, all the attacks of the notes are right in the grid. But the note end is not. If we want to quantize that as well, we would choose position and note end. And that quantizes the beginning and the ending. So they both land right in the grid. Or we could choose position and note length. Now the length of the note are also going to be exactly the grid size. Or we could choose just the note end. And just the ending will be quantized, not the beginning. Or just the note length. So the length of these notes will be exactly quantized to the grid length. But we're going to use just the position, because the length doesn't really matter. So let's hear what it sounds like now. That sounds a lot better. Each note is perfectly on the grid. 
so it's right on time with our track. But there's still more options we can choose. Like right over here, we could adjust the strength, which is how strong we're quantizing. If we set it to zero, it's not quantizing at all. If we bring it up to 100%, it puts it perfectly on the grid. But if you want somewhere in between, we could bring it down, maybe to 50% or 75%. It's really useful if you're dealing with a keyboard player that's very accomplished and you want to retain some of their feel. You just want the notes closer to the grid if it's a bit off. So you could start at zero and bring it up until it feels closer to what you want. Or in my case, you'd bring it all the way up so it's perfectly on the grid. And that depends on the part and also the player. Then down here, we chose the grid, 16th notes or anything we want. I chose 16th notes because of 16th notes in this performance. Then we could choose if they're straight 16th notes, triplet, dotted, or swing. Let's choose swing so we can hear the difference. At 0% swing, it's going to be exactly the same as straight. So it sounds like this. But if we readjust it, it'll change the timing of our 16th notes. Let me zoom in to this area right over here, where we have 16th notes in the part. And if we readjust the swing strength, it'll change the timing of those 16th notes. Just watch. If I bring it up, it makes the 16th notes a bit later. So if I put it at 50%, it's going to sound like this. That's what's known as a swing feel. Let's bring it up a little higher to about 75%. Let's hear that. It swings a bit differently. Let's bring it up more to about 86. When we bring it up that high, it's almost a triplet feel. But for this part, I'm going to bring it down and keep it straight 16th notes. Next, we can go down here and decide what notes get quantized. By default, we'll quantize all of them. But if we turn these off, we can choose which direction to move the notes. For example, if the notes are early, we can move them right, and it quantizes all the early notes and moves them later. Or we can choose to just move the late notes earlier to move them left, which we don't see over here. Let's move over. We can see these notes are a bit late. So if I choose this, it moves them earlier. But it doesn't move the early notes later, unless we choose this one as well. So now it's going to move left or right, which is really useful. If you're dealing with a player who tends to play a little rushed or early, you can just choose move right, but maybe the late notes don't bother you as much. So you could turn this off and just fix when he plays early. But in most situations, we'll choose both to fix the early notes and the late notes. And then over here deals with the length of our notes. So if we choose position and note end, we could choose to shrink the notes if they're too long or grow the notes if they're too short. Again, most times we'll choose both, but you might find times where you just want one or the other. I'm going to put this back to position because I don't want to change the length of our notes. Then if we go down over here, we could choose the range of what gets quantized. If we leave it at zero, all the notes get quantized. But if we bring it up, just the notes that are further off will get fixed, and the closer ones won't. So if we start at 50%, let's zoom out. Just the notes that are very far off get quantized. As we bring it in, it gets more and more sensitive in fixing those notes. So now we're happy with this, we'll go down here and choose OK. 
but don't choose commit. We'll check out commit a little bit later. Hit OK. Now our part is quantized right in the grid. But it's not permanent. We could undo it if we want. We can go back to the dialog and just choose bypass. And it puts our notes back to the way they were before, how we played them, after and before. So at any point, we can go back to the original performance just by choosing bypass over here. Or we can go back and readjust our strength, our swing. Anything we want can be readjusted later because none of it is permanent. As long as we choose OK and not commit. But let's put it back to bypass, which is back to the original performance. And let me show you a few menu options. If we go up here and right click, we can go to edit and quantize. And there's a few options right here. Now, if we're using the edit menu, it's only going to apply to notes that are selected. So let's first select these notes right here. Then we'll right click up here, go to edit, and then choose quantize and one of the options over here. If we choose this one right here, it's going to quantize based on the last used settings, which is how we set it up a minute ago. So if we choose this, it quantized these four notes based on 16th notes, before and after, while the other notes are unquantized. Let's undo that. We could also quantize to our grid. So if I switch this to quarter notes, right click, go to edit, and go down here and quantize position to the grid, which in this case is quarter notes. So if I choose this, it quantizes the selected notes to quarter notes based on the grid. Let's undo that. And we could also unquantize from the menu. So let's first go back to quantize, turn bypass off, hit OK, and now the performance is quantized. But now we can select just these notes, right click, go to edit, quantize, and just unquantize those notes. So now these notes are no longer quantized, while the other ones still are. But let's put it back. So now all the notes are quantized again. And with these notes selected, we can choose under Edit, Quantize, Freeze Quantization, which is going to freeze the quantizing for these notes. So we'll choose this. And now these notes are permanently quantized. So if we go back to the dialog and choose to bypass it, it bypassed all these notes, but these notes are still quantized because we froze that quantization. So it's now permanent. But it's very useful when you want to commit to certain notes, but still go back and readjust the other ones. And we could also commit to the whole thing. Just set this how we like, and instead of hitting OK, just hit Commit. And that automatically turns on Bypass in this dialog, but it committed the quantization to this part. But because we committed to it, if we go back to the dialog, we can't bypass it or readjust the strength because we committed to it. So now this is the final performance. So I wouldn't recommend using this unless you're sure that you're happy with it. Otherwise, just hit OK, and it still quantizes the part. But gives you the freedom of changing it later. Either bypassing it or readjusting it, however you prefer. Now, I should mention we can quantize on the way in using input quantize. 
and I've already created a video showing off that feature. So check that one out. But for now, that's pretty much it. That's quantizing MIDI in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!